If you know anything about YWCA history, you know that since its proud beginnings in 1869, the YW has championed social progress for women and children. Created by women for every woman, the YW has forged a trail of leadership, advocacy, and action wherever it has recognized a community need. Understanding that, it is easy to see why empowering women is a part of our logo. What may not be so obvious is why the eliminating racism part is there. By the late 1950s and early 1960s, the Pittsburgh YWCA was working to actively integrate. YWCA Greater Pittsburgh owned two residences for women by then, one in Pittsburgh's Hill District and the other one on Spa Street in East Liberty. These buildings housed women in need of safe, affordable shelter and also provided a place for supportive programs and recreational services. Around the same time, the community of Homewood was coming into its own as a vibrant, vital African-American community. The Spa Street YW administration decided to ask the justice-conscious, PTA-going, community-minded Homewood women, how would they like to become a part of the YW structure? And that is where bridge builder Sarah B. Campbell's history with the YWCA begins. Well, you know, uh, here in Homewood, back in the 50s, early 50s and early 60s, uh, we were a community that was coming together. So by that time, um, the YW at Spar Street, where the administration was, uh, had uh, come to the conclusion that uh, here in Pittsburgh, we should begin to uh, bring together the <clears throat> black and, and white um, uh, groups. Outer culture was moving, and um, there was plans and conversation about desegregation. And our women said, we want, services here, right here in Homewood. And so um, the YW uh, contracted with the Baxter School to use the cafeteria for classes. And, uh, <clears throat> and that's where we got started here in, 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 in Homewood. The program continued to grow and Sarah became the point person for Homewood and the Spa Street directors, predominantly white women from wealthy families, demonstrated a deep commitment for justice, a deep commitment for trying to empower women. Administration at, <clears throat> at Spa Street uh, and YWCA mission and commitment was to work with women to increase and change for the better the quality of life, whether it be the girls or adults. Now, this was all happening at the beginning of the Civil Rights Movement. There was an idea that, in order to bring black and white together, the YW needed to build a building downtown. And while that was fine, Sarah continued to advocate for the program in Homewood. The women were always uh, ready to partner with uh, whomever uh, shared the same values that we did, which was empowering women, justice and love for each other. And I suppose that's the reason why they were able to hear me when I would come and say that in Homewood, uh, we're willing to work with people, but we want our program in Homewood. We always felt as though that you have to start where you are. That kind of feeling helped when civil rights came along because where uh, YW in the past uh, partnered with the uh, uh, women's suffrage movement, now we were talking about partnering with African Americans, asking for justice, asking for the benefits of rights that as a citizen of this country that all of us were entitled to. Those are kind of the discussions that we had and pulled us together regardless of color. It was 
a challenge and and we saw ourselves changing something. YW, it was wonderful to be able to say that you were a YWCA woman. So the Homewood programs thrived and soon outgrew the Baxter School cafeteria, already on the lookout for affordable space, for a space they could call their own. The Homewood women became aware of the Plumber Building, a structure the owner was vacating and was willing to donate to the city. My mother taught us very early, there's two things in this culture that you need. You need to be educated and you needed to own something. We needed a place. We, we needed ownership. The building was given to the city for a uh, social program here in Homewood. So that's where the YWCA started their, their program. And um, uh, it was small, but it was ours. And so the YWCA Homewood programs grew to include a child care center, job training programs, and help for women who needed jobs, all with the idea of helping people to improve the quality of life. Sarah Campbell kept things together, remained the bridge builder. And as the plumber building became too small for Homewood's needs, Sarah advocated with the YW administration downtown to ensure that the African American community was getting what it needed. And again, they found a location in Homewood to suit their needs, right next door to their existing facility. So we began to build. The most important thing that you can go back in history and look at is the fact that that building was built with 30, with over 35 percent minority construction labor and well built. As YW, we were treading places where other people was afraid to, to tread and we were coming out successful. We have a building and we were able to expand program and we were able to meet the needs of women uh, with children and we could build for the future. You know, what next? And so you, you know, you answer the call as it comes. Mm -hmm. Sarah B. Campbell has answered each call that has come her way with passion, determination, and an openness of heart that guides her actions toward a more accepting and less negative society. As we think back over her 50 years as a YWCA woman and champion of social change and racial justice, Sarah sums it up best. Social justice is <clears throat> a spot for everyone and the ability for people to earn that spot. How can we inspire each other to be loving, accepting, and growing? And I think if we could do that, we could change the negativity in our society. There's a destiny that makes us brothers and sisters and none goes his way alone. All that we send into the lives of others will come back into our own. That's it. Mm -hmm.